Hello there. Today we're going to take a little bit of an in-depth look at a few characteristics of the three types of rocks that we talked about in last notes. Remember you can always pause, rewind, and uh, go back to make sure you have everything in, the, uh, in your notes that's necessary. Uh, I encourage you that if you do that and still don't understand anything, please come talk to me about it so we can make sure that you have all the information you need for the quizzes. So let's talk about each type of uh, rock and then some specific characteristics for each one. Uh, again, we're looking at the rock cycle where each of the different rocks can be changed into another one. Of course, starting with magma and we get our igneous rocks and uh, we're going to learn the difference between extrusive versus intrusive igneous rock. Extrusive just means it uh, forms externally, so it forms from lava versus intrusive igneous rocks formed from magma. And uh, then we have metamorphic rocks that get uh, changed by heat and pressure and sedimentary rocks that happen after compaction and cementation uh, from sediments that are broken down from all the other types of rocks. So again, let's go through each set of rocks and some specific characteristics. So remember, last time we talked igneous, uh, begins as magma, solidifies between 700 and 1250. Remember, these are all from the last notes. You don't have to copy anything on this slide. Um, and it's a mixture of many different minerals. Remember, we talked about it can form either on the outside or the inside of the uh, crust. So let's talk uh, specifically. If an igneous rock is light colored, these are the keywords here, light colored, you might want to underline that or highlight it, then we call that rock felsic. It's just a name for a light colored igneous rock. Now, having a felsic rock usually tells us that it has either high amounts of aluminum or potassium or silicon and sodium in it, but it doesn't guarantee it. It is simply light colored igneous rock. And if it's a dark colored igneous rock, we call it mafic. Uh, again, this gives us clues in what minerals it makes up or what elements make up the rock, calcium, iron, magnesium, and uh, usually not very much silicon. But the main thing here we're looking at is the color. So felsic is light and mafic is dark. The other thing we look at igneous rocks is how uh, the texture of the rock looks like. Is it coarse grain, meaning there's big crystals in it, uh, where it looks like you can see the parts of the rock. These coarse grained rocks are rocks that have taken longer to cool down. The magma or the lava took a long time to cool down and it gave the minerals in the rock a long time to grow. So you, consequently you have large mineral in the rock which make it coarse grained. On the other hand, if the igneous rock cools very quickly, then there'll be very little to no time for the crystals to form and we'll have what it's called a fine-grained rock. Let's look at a couple examples so you can make sure we understand. So here we have four igneous rocks. This one's granite, this one's rhyolite, this one's gabbro, and this one's basalt. So if we look at it, these ones that are on the top here are lighter in color, so they are felsic, and the ones here on the bottom are darker, so they're mafic. And these two here, where you can see the individual grains of the rock in them, we call that coarse grained. And these ones over here, where you can't really tell where the parts of the rock are, those would be fine grained. So hopefully you get those four different words and, and why which one's different from each other. Um, the other thing, like I said on the other slide, we have two different places that igneous rocks can form. It can either form inside the earth, in which case it is an intrusive igneous rock. So magma pushes into the surrounding rocks and it cools off and it, it becomes an intrusive igneous rock. Or it can happen on the external part of the crust, which we call it an extrusive rock. And it's when the magma erupts and it's now become lava and it cools either quickly or slowly. Um, generally extrusive rocks um, are cooling very quickly and so usually get very small to no crystals formed. 
Here's an example of a of a igneous rock. It's um it's a dark colored volcanic glass that forms when uh, from very rapid cooling. And so let's see what you think it is. It felsic or mafic, coarse grained or or, um, or fine grained and intrusive or extrusive. So quiz yourself here. Talk to yourself. What do you think these are? Here we go. Here are the answers. This is, um, so again, felsic or mafic, fine grain or coarse grain, intrusive or extrusive. We have a mafic because it's dark. Fine grain because I can't see the individual particles of the rock. Extrusive because it's cooled so quickly and have very little crystals. We know it's an extrusive rock that actually formed outside of the earth. All right, let's move on to sedimentary rock. Again, this is the same slide we looked at last notes. You don't have to re um, copy any of this part. Uh, the sediments form from erosion or weathering. And again, make sure you know that those, those two words can be used interchangeably. Erosion and weathering are the same thing. Um, sediments are moved from one place to another from the water. Remember in our activity, you could either go in the clouds or the river or the ocean because the water tends to move these sediments around. And um, they then get deposited in layers, the older ones on the bottom, and those layers become compacted and cemented together over time. So let's talk about sedimentary rock. Uh, first of all, sedimentary rocks tend to form at or near the Earth's surface always because it's from broken down other pieces of rock and the, the water's moving around and that happens on the surface of the Earth. And there is no heat or pressure involved in this. It's simply moving the, the rocks around and then once all the rocks particles are together, they get cemented together with other minerals. And because they get layered down or laid down in layers, those layers have a specific name. We call that strata. A strata of rock just means the layer of rock it's in. So make sure you know that word strata. And the idea that these are in, in layers and that the, the oldest layer is on the bottom and the youngest layer is on the top, we call that stratification the process which sedimentary rocks are arranged in layers is stratification. Now we have three different types of sedimentary rock and it really just comes to what they're made of and, and kind of how they're put together. The first one is called a clastic and it's made from fragments of rock and then cemented together with a mineral, either calcite or quartz. And it tends to look like this where it's a rock that you can see other pieces of rock in it. Um, this particular example is called breccia. You don't have to write anything in this black part here. Uh, it just kind of explains um, how it was formed. Uh, the main thing is to know clastic fragments of other rocks. The second type of sedimentary rock is called a chemical sedimentary rock. And uh, essentially, the minerals crystallize out of a solution. So we have a, a liquid where the the sediments are so small that they're actually dissolved in the water in the solution and as those um, minerals are in the solution they actually crystallize out of that solution out of that liquid to become rock so this is an example of limestone um, and again you don't have to write anything in the black uh, but it does give you a little information about limestone just understand that this is really, really small particles. That's why you can see, you can't see other parts of a rock because the particles were so small they were suspended in the liquid. And the last one of sedimentary rock almost isn't a rock at all because it's not made from other pieces of rock. It's actually made from the remains of plants and animals. So this is what we call an organic sedimentary rock because it, those particles that make up the rock used to be alive. This is an example of coal and coal is the accumulation of plant materials, um, usually from swamps. But um, in class, we looked at one that was actually made of little tiny shells that had been put together. Um, chalk for a chalkboard um, is actually made, well, most of it that you see in classrooms now is, is synthetically made, but uh, a lot of chalk, original chalk, is actually made of the little microscopic dead bodies of sea animals. So. An organic sedimentary rock actually, yes, it's technically a rock and it's sedimentary, but it, it's not made of rock particles. It's made of remains of plants.
So there is sedimentary. Let's move on to metamorphic. Again, same slide as before of last notes. You don't have to copy this again, uh, but just to remind you, metamorphic means to change or to change shape. Uh, it changes with pressure and temperature. These are the two key things, temperature and pressure. And a lot of times it happens in convergent boundaries because then you have subduction, which puts the rock in a perfect place to be under extreme pressure and temperatures. Um, and it usually happens deep inside the crust. So let's talk a couple characteristics of metamorphic rocks. There are two different ways it can happen. The first one is called contact metamorphosism. And this is when a, a rock changes because it gets close to magma. And that hot magma um, heats up the surrounding rock so much that it, it almost bakes it. And we get... Uh, we get it to change into another rock. So the increased temperature changes the composition of the rock and the minerals are changed into new minerals. And it's just because it's so hot next to that magma. Um, this rock, again, you don't have to write anything in the black, but this particular rock is called horn, uh, horn fells. It's a fine grain, non-foliated metamorphic rock produced by contact metamorphosism. Um, so this rock happened to form right next to hot magma. The other type of metamorphic rock is called a regional metamorphic or regional metamorphosism. And this is um, when the pressure builds up so much deep inside the earth to change the rock. Um, usually large pieces of the earth's crust collide. Again, we said convergent plate boundaries. The rock is deformed and it chemically changed by all the heat and pressure from that tectonic activity. Um, so we've got our two different ones. We have uh, both contact metamorphosism and then regional on how they're formed. We went over this uh, on our first day of, not, uh, of rocks in class, and that is this idea that when a rock changes to metamorphic, the grains get squished together. And if those grains all line up, then we call it foliated. So we get these lines of minerals that are lining up in the rock due to the, the pressure. So this one happens to be called nice or nice. Um, you don't pronounce the G, so it's called nice and it is a foliated metamorphic rock. It kind of has this banding pattern, these, these lines or stripes along. Um, and again, it's because of the pressure that it was formed under. We also have metamorphic rock that is non-foliated and it just means there are no lines on it. There are no banding patterns. The minerals didn't line up. This one is marble. It's a metamorphic rock that is not foliated. So let's do a little quiz time for you. Um, is it a foliated or non-foliated rock? One of these is foliated and the others are not. Uh, so take a second for a moment and see if you can guess which one's which. I hope you said this one on the very right here is foliated. You can see this banding pattern along it, whereas these ones are just kind of random in, uh, in nature. So that is all we are going to talk about today uh, with the more specific characteristics of each of the three types of rocks. If you have any questions, please talk to me about it. Otherwise, I will see you in class.